Uh, today we will use the SPI nor flash as a USB disk. Both the ways. Uh, accessed from the microcontroller. So we just write well, some ADC measurements from it and we can read it right here in our computer. So it's pretty handy, easy, nice to use. So I will be using the SAM4S explained board and it comes uh, by default without the uh, flash memory. So by default it looks something like like this. Mm, so we have a footprint to solder the memory and as we do so uh, we will have a little bit of trouble because as we take a look at the schematic of the board we got the right protection pin and hold pin uh, together to something called VDD main and this is connected to nothing and to prove it we can go to the uh, board files and take a look at the pins so this is the pin for right, right protection and this is the hold pin so uh, taking a look at this we got uh, the hold pin connected to a via next via to the right protection pin and this is only connected between those pins so it's nowhere else it's just floating so in order to make the memory work uh, i have uh, soldered a zero ohm resistor between the uh, power supply pin right here the eighth pin and the hold pin the seventh pin so it looks like like this So as you see, there's a zero ohm resistor right here between those two pins. Uh, and also there's uh, something to mention right here, if you want to use this board, absolutely do not use the user button right here. Why? Let's take a look at the schematic again. Uh, so the chip select pin for the memory is PA5 and going to the user button we can see it's also the PA5 so if you want to use the memory right there don't use the user button uh, because it can do some uh, file system information damage and you can mm, not access some files on it so keep that in mind so let's take a look at the project we have so uh, to access the memory I used a template from the virtual memory RAM and made a few modifications to it which I will show in a moment uh, also what I have right in the project I got also the UART for debugging purposes, you don't have to use it. Uh, also necessary the SPI, so the master and the driver. Next the USB as mass storage. Uh, I also added a ADC to get the um, measurements. I use them to write uh, with the FATFS to the memory, just for example and uh, surely you have to add the FATFS file system. So now let's take a look at the virtual memory component, how the USB access is uh, configured. So the beginning of the write is just right here. So uh, we got uh, some a uh, number of sectors by the size of 
512 bytes uh, to read or to write. So if we want to read it, uh, I just uh, read a whole sector at the address uh, the um, USB wants to read uh, and I next then make a pointer to the sector and right here I uh, select the number of uh, 512 bytes uh, uh, sectors I want to uh, transfer uh, with the USB so if it's uh, be read uh, set it's uh, reading so from this read I tra transfer the number of sectors or uh, maximum eight sectors of uh, the size of 512 bytes to the USB or if it's a write so we read is zero mm -hmm. then I uh, write from the USB to the page path uh, with the amount of data maximum eight or the NB sector so uh, the writing is done right here so first of all I check up check up if the if there's any offset to the beginning of a sector in the memory so if there is one I make sure to uh, keep that in mind so when I uh, read a whole uh, page in order to set it in a buffer and modify the buffer with the data from the USB I want to write to the memory uh, I read it uh, from the beginning of a sector so the address is minus the offset times uh, the uh, 512 bytes sector size default uh, and I copy the um, data from the USB uh, to a auxiliary buffer I read from then I erase uh, at the zero address of the sector and then I write uh, the buffer modified with the USB data uh, and then I check up if I got uh, something left uh, to write in the uh, next uh, sector if I got uh, I do the same so the read the flash at the beginning of the uh, new sector modify the buffer erase at the beginning and write at the beginning and then after the writing or reading the NB sector is uh, uh, minus the NB sector I have just uh, written into it or read uh, and the address uh, is incremented by the number of the sectors uh, that were written or read uh, times the sector size uh, uh, which is the 512 bytes so this is for the USB and now going uh, to the FATFS uh, the FATFS is uh, configured uh, just like uh, ordinary for the SD uh, so it looks like this so I write uh, the SD buffer to a file which is sum4.txt uh, and now to um, make it work you have to make sure that if you go to the project and go to the symbols you got this symbol written if not the access to the virtual memory by the FATFS uh, will be disabled so make sure to have this and this is generated by default uh, with adding the MSC with the configuration of the virtual memory so make sure to have that in the project and now let's take a look at the functions for the microcontroller FATFS write so 
memory to RAM, which is uh, uh, SPI nor flash to microcontroller uh, memory, so RAM. And uh, right here I got uh, only a 512 uh, bytes uh, sector uh, read because there's a little bit of a trouble with uh, using the FATFS with uh, greater uh, sector sizes. So it has to be the 512. So uh, I read uh, from the address the function wants to read. Uh, and then I copy the sector to the RAM. <laughs> okay, and now in the next function, which is uh, RAM to memory. Uh, just as uh, in the USB, I calculate the offset and write uh, only the 512 uh, bytes. So this is it for the FATFS in the microcontroller. Uh, and uh, mm, there's uh, one thing when using the NOR flash. Mm, I don't know if it's a bug or something. Uh, in the erase write function, as we take a look at it in the main, uh, I always add a flush weight um, to check up if uh, the controller of the memory is uh, not busy. So we can do some uh, writing, erasing, or whatever. Mm. But although I do this, if you don't wait, for example, only one millisecond, uh, the write will be not performed. So you will simply erase the memory. Or so other uh, errors can occur. So in order to keep it safe, I added a delay. So that's for the access. And uh, now uh, going to the main. So how the project works, basically. Uh, I init the clocks, so with the conf clock, I use for the main the PLLA, and uh, set it up uh, just as described in the setup right here. So the clock for the system is uh, 120 megahertz, and for the USB, I use the PLLB and both for the uh, system and the USB I use the uh, clock source from the external uh, oscillator which is the 12 megahertz. Okay so this configured. There's also uh, a configuration for the uh, Debug keyword, you don't have to use it. I use it just to see what's going on. Uh, and in the board unit, I also have uh, initialization of the pins for the SPI. So going to the comp board, I defined uh, that the SPI is configured and the chip select zero is configured. And this matches the uh, memory pins, which are used. I also wrote them right here. So the CS pin is PA5, clock is PA14, uh, master output is PA13, master input is PA12. And the LEDs are the PC10 and PC17. Okay. Uh, and one thing to mention that in the virtual memory I disabled the uh, uh, initialization of the RAM variable so there's no 16 megabyte in uh, RAM initialization uh, and going to the virtual memory H file 
And there's also uh, an add-on of the functions for the writing in the flash. And uh, yeah, the sector size is kept as original, so 512. And going to the configuration of the virtual memory file. Uh, the sectors, number of, of sectors is uh, this, which matches the mm, 16 megabyte uh, memory. So this times uh, 512 gives you 16 megabytes. Okay. Now going back to the main. So we configure the clocks for the peripherals, the ADC, the SPI, uh, the LEDs, and also the clock uh, chip select. And also I did a delay right here. Uh, so if uh, you program the microcontroller, you don't uh, accidentally, when uh, resetting, enter the right from the microcontroller to the memory, so you can uh, break it up while it's continuing, so it uh, can uh, uh, make some false writes to the FATFS descriptor, and you get some files missing. So uh, we keep it uh, from that. And there's uh, one thing to mention. Uh, if you um, start a new flash memory, you will have always to make the chip erase. So uh, all the memory will be, will be set to uh, 255 uh, decimal and then the computer can format it. And as we go to the format, you have to uh, select the format page to uh, 4095. So let's reconnect the board. Okay. So if you want to format it, uh, you should take this volume. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I modified is the delay function. So as we make the delay, we also want to make the USB transfers. So we wait uh, one millisecond and we also do a USB transfer. The times we want to make the delay. Okay, so we start ADC, uh, we get the measurement, uh, we print the measurement into a buffer and also debug. And as we got uh, the buffer uh, set up, so, so new line also at the end, uh, we do the write of the SD buffer. And after the write, uh, I uh, disable all of the uh, LEDs uh, so the board doesn't blink. And I wait uh, two seconds. So in this two seconds, I can safely uh, remove the USB from the device. So I don't uh, come into the flash write happening and I don't make the uh, file system corrupt. So uh, that's for the uh, example. I will also implement the example on the Arduino Duo, it's uh, pretty much uh, the same. So thank you for watching. Hope you uh, find uh, this uh, interesting for your project and see you in the next one.